Hi, welcome to Triangle Spotlight. I'm Suzanne Lin, and uh, today, oh my gosh, a friend that I so respect. Her name's Crystal Parker. Uh, Crystal is from here in Central Florida, and um, Crystal is, well, she's president-elect for the Christian Chamber. And um, so we'll talk about that. But one of the things that really prompted this interview was a blog that she wrote. And I can say you wrote because you're actually here. And, um, and a lot of your viewers wanted to see in video what you had to say. So we're in a very um, interesting time with Corona and you just poured information into it. Welcome, Crystal. Thank you so much. Crystal, what prompted the blog? What is it called and what prompted it? Well, I, I really challenged myself to start writing more. I, I write uh, as a professor. Uh, I teach several management classes. And so I do a lot of writing. And several of my students and friends and people I work with have encouraged me to get some of my work out. And this mm -hmm. one was really easy for me because of the times that we're in right now, the challenging economic times, as well as just a change in how we do business. And it's something that I'm very familiar with and have a lot of experience with. Uh, we've also studied it through the evolution of management. What is it? What is management? I always challenge my students in my management class, what does management look like in the future? And who's going to be effective in leadership in the future? A lot of the students have said virtual, virtual, virtual. Well, it's a different skill set. So what I thought I'd do is i just give three easy steps to leading from your living room and uh, help people really be successful in a virtual environment connecting with people. And I think the important part about this is that this isn't going away. This is not just information for you to use for the next month or two. We have a new normal now. Things are people. We're not wanting to put our pants back on and get back into the office too fast, right? <laughs> no doubt. Actually, I, I read somewhere someone said, you know, you should actually put your jeans on at least once a week, make sure they still fit, because the pajama <laughs> pants are a little forgiving. So yeah, of course, sure. make sure you do that. It's, it's yeah. the truth. So this is going to be. This is a new normal. Um, the first point you made was build trust through empathy. What is? What do you mean by that? Yeah, so I think a lot of times, and you may have heard me say this before, but people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And I was actually just speaking with a client the other day. The president of their company got on and basically shared with employees virtually that are displaced around uh, the city and told them that there's going to be layoffs and furloughs and reduced hours and things of that nature and really created a lot of fear. And I think that what ends up happening when we're not sitting side by side or able to touch one another is we forget we're talking to people. And mm. people uh, you know, really appreciate and respect someone that recognizes they're, they're talking to a human being, no matter what form or whatever your vehicle is for communicating, not to forget that the other side of the screen or the other side of the email or DM or whatever is a human being that has mouths to feed, um, that has a life, that has feelings, and that is um, wanting to connect. We are designed to connect. That's how we're designed as humans. And it's very important that we not forget as leaders that we have to build trust in those relationships. And that comes through empathy, connecting with people as humans on the other side of the screen. And this is a great time for you to start meetings on a positive note. Consciously, as you're putting your bullet points together, start out with something positive. Yes. I always encourage people to share a success story. Uh, I like to use music. I, I, like I said, I am a professor of online school. I've taught over 700 students online and more. Uh, I was also a part of something where we transformed a position into a virtual role. So it would require virtual leadership as well as uh, led several people across different states. And so I know that those personal connections are very important and also mm -hmm. having fun is too. It's okay mm -hmm. to be a little bit silly. I know that the times right now are very challenging and it is serious times. And certainly if you're going to get up and talk about layoffs or you're going to talk about reduced hours, you don't want to start with celebrate this right. time. I don't think that's going to transition. Right. Too much. Sensitive, right. Right. Uh, but however, there is, uh, you know, for an everyday meeting or an, just something that you're doing on a common um, 
a consistent basis with your team, it's okay to add a little fun in there because at the end of the day, we've got to connect. Sure. And you don't have to be perfect. I think some of the most highly viewed um, YouTube videos are the ones where, you know, people are Zooming or Skyping and the baby scoots in and the nanny's grabbing, running. After him. We love that. It doesn't even matter what the information is at that point. We're drawn to want to watch it because of that. And then, oh, by the way, that's really in, in good information, too. Oh, absolutely. And it's also, you know, one of the things that I think it really helped me be successful early in my career, when I became a supervisor in a call center, I didn't really know anything about the regulations, the, the you know, the procedures or any of that. But what I did know is people. And so the very first thing I do is sit down with them in their little cubicle and then look around at the pictures and I learn what was important to them. Wow. And you can think of a better opportunity than when you're zooming in to someone's house or their life and a pet runs across and say, well, who is that? You know, not ignore it. It is part of who they are as human beings in their life. And so really, you know, spotlight that it'd be, you know, on a, on a consistent basis, on an average day, you're connecting with your team. How fun would it be? To take your pet to work day. Hey, well, they don't have to go far. They're just in the backyard. So then you can introduce them. I mean, there's so many different ways you can have fun and connect, build empathy, build that team, build morale. People determine the potential in an organization. You can put together the blueprint, but ultimately it's people that have to be the ones to execute that. If you can't keep them fired up, motivated, and wanting to work for you and build that culture of trust in an organization, you're going to have people working for themselves, working for their own mission, working for survival, instead of really pulling together. And right now, I can't think of any greater time that a company would have to gather the people together and act as one molecule, one wave, instead of choppy water, one big tsunami. Right mm -hmm. now is the time, and the way to do that is to remember, it's human beings. People are going to determine the potential of your success. Get them together mm -hmm. and make them feel like they're part of the big picture. Wow, that blew me away when you talked about seeing people, what, what their pictures are in their cubicles. And in a way, we have the opportunity to still do that through Zoom. We can still have, maybe make it more of a priority instead of just the group setting for a meeting. Hey, I'd like to Skype with you. I'd like to Zoom with you um, just to see how you're doing. We have time. What are we doing with that time now? Can we, can we use that to care about people and maybe connect and find out things about them that we never knew before? You know? Absolutely. Fun. Cup of coffee in your kitchen. We're going to have a cup of coffee today. We're going to meet from our kitchens and we're going to just take that 15 minutes to start our day and just stay, get focused. I mean, there's so many fun things you can do and really use this time uh, to build this um, mm -hmm. community and connection with people that you didn't have an opportunity to do before. Can't say we don't have time on our hands. I love that. That very powerful first point. The second one was to use a variety of communication methods because everybody um, learns different. They take in information different. And um, we still need to be sensitive to that. And you can be even doing it uh, digitally, right? Oh, absolutely. I think, uh, well, I've, I've experienced a lot of times a leader say, you know, I sent out the email, but everybody's still doing the same thing. Nothing's changed. Well, it's because you've got to reach people in a variety of different ways. And just because they're sitting behind a computer, uh, you have a phone, you have an opportunity to make a phone call. Turn on the camera. I had some comments come from uh, some of the people that read my article that said, you know, the greatest piece of advice that I have, Troy Cook actually was the one that said it was flip on the camera. And he does a lot of remote work with team all over uh, the U.S. And remember, just flip on the camera, let people see you. There's a large portion of communication that is actually nonverbal, that you're not going to pick up on the phone. You're not going to pick up through an email or a DM. And so really utilize a variety of those communication opportunities. You're not locked into one and uh, connect with people in different ways and keep it very fluid as far as how you communicate. Hmm. And being able to repurpose that really, if you start with, um, for example, you know, Facebook live um, or, you know, uh, video content, it can be repurposed into a blog, an article, an email. It can go on YouTube. It can be a snippet for social media. There's so many ways the time that you're putting into that one project of repurposing and meeting people in the different ways they consume information. That's yeah, you, you definitely inspired a thought. I mean, how many times have people had to miss a meeting 
And then they had to hear secondhand what was said. Well, with our ability to utilize uh, technology, we can record the meeting now and make sure they hear exactly what it was that they missed out on through a meeting as well. So many opportunities here. You know, Crystal, just talking about that, you, you inspired a thought that what's really exciting is that maybe prior to coronavirus, we had we had the suits, we had people with the title management and the bosses that got to go into the Monday morning meetings and hear what the top brass had to say. They were dispersed to tell their teams what they think that they heard and how it was best, how they can best translate it. And then they, it's kind of like that telephone game. Every layer gets more diluted and a little bit less accurate from what was said. Man, what a great opportunity to go, hey, uh, I am the president of the company. I am able to speak to not just my management team now, but pe- to the the you know uh, part timers or um, the freelancers or the people who are emptying the trash. Or you know, to, to the, you're now all an equal playing field as far as what communication, what information you're receiving, because you're all worthy. We're all the same team. It doesn't matter what your title is. Here's yes. here's the video. Here's here's exactly word for word what happened. Exactly. Well, it's funny because I'm in Kansas right now and uh, we're definitely social distancing. So this is good for us. <laughs> uh, I like to say physical distancing. Yes. Social distancing. No, let's stay together. I but love that. What, it, being in Kansas, you know, growing up out here in Southwest Kansas, what we would see before they came up with the big, you know, fancy irrigation systems was they would basically have these rows along the crop. And these rows would be where they would take water. So the source of water would just flood the crop. And the the crop at the the beginning source of the water would always get the most. Mm -hmm. And then by the time that the water got to the very end, those little guys sometimes didn't get the water. Well, I like to think of communication, exactly what you talked about when you were sharing that about communicating with everyone through the masses and making sure that there's no dilution of that water, no dilution of the communication so that everybody's getting fed, if you will, or watered. And communication in an organization is like water. You know, it mm-hmm. certainly is vital uh, for every layer of, of individuals, no matter if you're on, you know, a flat organizational structure, or if you have a hierarchy, whatever it is, communication is extremely important. I love the way you said that. Let's let's wrap up with the third one. Set expectations and rely on your measurements. What does that mean and, and how do you implement that? Sure. Well, a lot of times people see the value in sending people to work from home or work remotely but they don't have any way to manage the work. And so what ends up happening is they know that their idea is there. They can save money by reducing time in the office commute, whatever, and also use that as a program, as a benefit for people to work from home. But they can't measure the work, so they start to micromanage. Mm. And what I really want to encourage people here is, you know, set the expectations, Make sure they're consistent and aligned with the larger goals of the organization so that you don't have a bunch of people working individually. They're working on one big project or the mission. And then rely on the measurements that you have in place. Don't micromanage. Empower. Let people have some of that feeling of empowerment. Just because they're working from home doesn't mean that you have to check in with them every five minutes, ten minutes to make sure they're on track. Wow you don't have the measurements in place, then you as a leader, as a manager, now's the time to start working on what are some of the things I can do to check in on this project without being an over, without being micromanaging or overbearing in the situation and really empower. You'll find that if you empower your people and you have the tools to measure their work and their ability to perform, that people are going to really appreciate the opportunity and they'll work harder for you rather than when you're standing over the top of them. It, it, it just wow. a, a crazy example of this is when I was, uh, one day I was at home and I moved into a new subdivision and there was workers from everywhere and they were building houses and putting in yards. And as I was sitting at home working from home, I, I don't like any sound and I could hear a man just yelling, just berating people. So, of course, you know, Miss Kravitz here, nosy neighbor, I go out and I'm looking to see, like, what's going on, you know? And I saw a man and he gets off of his tractor and his workers that were working on putting the yard in place, he was just screaming and yelling at them. 
and they weren't working to what he thought they should. And so as soon as he finishes berating them, they all start working again in the yard and hoeing and putting stuff in. He gets on his tractor and he drives off. And so I thought just the behavioral, you know, psychology person that I am, I wanted to watch and see what the workers did. And what the workers did was as soon as he was out of sight, they sat back down in the shade, they got their waters and they just started to relax. And then the minute that the tractor, we could hear the tractor, and I say we now because I'm in it with them, like I'm, I'm part of this. Right. And the minute we heard the tractor, boy, they got up and they started working again, right? And see, so what happens is, as a leader, you can drive that behavior. You can motivate, inspire, empower, and really push people, or you can really take away their opportunity uh, to really want to work for you. And it was a powerful visual that I was given that day. And it really reminded me to set the expectations, rely on the measurements. The measurements would have been the yard being complete and not micromanaging because if they need you there as a source to drive the behavior all the time, then you're going to have to sit there always and drive the behavior. The best thing is to do is empower, let people work, and then reward them, recognize them, and sow into them and praise them when they get it done. Krista, you are an amazing leader. And I love the fact that you see life through stories. And that, <laughs> that just is, you're such an effective communicator. And I love that about you. You're, you're so smart. And thank you so much for sharing this. It's a really important time. I think we should do more of these. Let's I keep learning it. how to lead in this new time and, and um, realize we're not going back to the old way. It, this is a whole new, whole new thing. So um, thank you so much. And how can people get a hold of you? I know that you do a lot of uh, leadership coaching. I do. Thank you for that. And thanks for your words. I always say it takes one to know one, Suzanne. Oh, so the fact that I appreciate your words. I really do. Um, how they can get a hold of me is uh, through my website, www.intentandimpact.com. I N T E N T A N D I M P A C T dot com. Or you can email me, Crystal Parker at intent and impact dot com. Thanks for watching the show. We hope that you enjoyed it. Having digital marketing for your product or organization is so crucial these days. People are ditching traditional advertising like print and broadcast commercials and turning to relationship marketing platforms like YouTube and podcasts that people can consume on demand on their time. Let's talk about how we can build your digital library with segments just like this.